um, it's a, a classical way, meaning that this is the, you should know how to do it this way, seat with a patient seated. So that if someone says, do you know how to li lift the liver? This is the way you should do it. So I'm gonna show you that way, and then after lunch, I'm gonna show you how I really do it. Because only ever, rare moon, rare occasion do I do it that way. If I can do, if I can do something another way that's easier for me, I do it, I do it easy. Control. In order to do this first technique we're gonna do, you need to control the patient's balance in order for them to relax. We're gonna do a seated technique. If the patient uh, does not feel that they are controlled uh, when you're doing a painful technique to them, then they're gonna tighten their stomach muscles and they're gonna control their own balance. That's how balance works. Um, if, they, if, they, if they're not relaxed, you're not gonna get deep. To do things that are painful to people, um, you have to do a couple things. You have to tell them, this is gonna hurt you. This is gonna be uncomfortable. That's what I say, I don't say hurt. I say this is going to be uncomfortable. And a lot of times I'll have someone say, oh, you said that thing was going to be uncomfortable, and it wasn't, and it wasn't. No one's ever mad if I warn them, and it's not painful. Mm. It's when you don't warn them, and they suddenly get something jab them, then they get fear, then they think you don't know what you're doing. So it's better to overwarn them than, than underwarn, if that's the correct word. Um, I'm going to take my fingers, my fingers are going to disappear in your gut. You need to get the depth before you're going to lift, if you want to do a liver lift. You can't start to do half of it and then left. Oh, let me give some indications just for liver. And I already, already gave you my, my preamble. If, you're doing a, if I'm doing a liver lift, it's because I did a local listening, which we're, we're gonna get to tomorrow. And I said, this area feels restricted, and then I go in and look what's there. The diagnosis and treatment is happening at the same time. In fact, of going in to lift and see whether or not I can lift it easily is gonna change how difficult it is to lift. That's the reason why I'm going in. On a much lower scale, you can decide to do liver lift because they have a right-sided problem. And when I say right-sided, you'll see when I do this to you, I'll do it to everyone if you want to have it done to you, or if you just want to spiritually watch, you can watch it done to somebody else. When I lift this, I'm lifting everything that's in there. And you're going to get a reaction, you're going straight to your back. And if you have a low, even to the low back, that, that problem can be reached by causing proprioception to something that's not normally feeling that kind of motion. It's going to send screaming signals back like the heart attack without causing a heart attack, except in that one, that one case. So, um, I have to be careful because I'm being recorded. No, that did not actually happen. Okay, so you're going to lift up, you're going to feel that in the shoulder. The way I, um, the way I originally converted, joined the visceral group, was we had a class, and I told you, I walked away from the class, and I said, I'm never doing this. I'm not gonna do this to a patient. For me, the conversion was, um, it was, a, it was a, I wanna say she was, I don't remember now, she was maybe 40 plus or minus, and she was a very big, heavy, African-American woman, had a car accident, she had a right shoulder problem, and I had tried to do all the other stuff that I knew how to do, which was quite a lot at that time. I was a student, but on my fellowship program, I knew how to do a lot of stuff. And everything, I got a whole big zero with her. And that's how I came back to the stuff that I thought was useless. I said, well, I got nothing else to lose. So I went in here and I just put a little bit of pressure on her liver, just a little bit of pressure, what we call inhibition. And I went from whatever range of motion to being able to move to another range of motion. That was our test for um, Will taking a little bit of pressure up here by her some motion. And I did the technique and I said, maybe it wasn't all crap. Maybe there was actually something to it. That's how I got to it. Do you have a question or are you just doing chicken just chicken. Okay. So I'm open to this being uncomfortable or painful, but those of us coming from the Burrell perspective that teaches that you should never do anything viscerally that causes any sort of pain. Does he say that now? That, well, the That's not saying Burrell, I mean 20 years ago. The ta have taken it in this direction of being really only subtle. If there's ever any kind of discomfort, yeah. you have to stop what you're doing and do it a different yeah, way. Yeah. Well, that's we a whole know that Burrell himself doesn't do that. Yeah, that's a whole metamorphosis. I can't really comment on it. I think Burrell's a great man, and I, but I know him from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, I Comment I actually would like to make. Go ahead. Basically, I've taken uh, a visceral manipulation from a number of people with Burrell. And depending who you were taking out the class with, you have different perspectives. So I took, I took it with one person with Burrell, and they were in intense pressure. And another person I took it with Burrell was interested in just barely contacting the, the organ. 
So I think there's, there, in, in my personal opinion, there's a spectrum with people who are teaching for morale. If that helps. Okay, you already studied with Cato. All right. Well, let me let me just give you let's give, let me just give you the Steve Sennett somewhat split personality, alter ego, diarrhea of the mouth. Okay, everything's got a spectrum. Everything's got a spectrum: mild, moderate, heavy. So you're given that rule. I'm going to tell you that rule doesn't apply. Yes. Yeah, but, but that rule might apply if you're teaching groups of 100 people and somewhere someone down the line did something with a patient and I, I'm going to go further on a limb and say this is traced to a lawsuit. That verbiage is traced to a lawsuit. Somebody got hurt and somebody said you told me to do this. And so all the verbiage you got for mass media to be whatever. Uh, me, you can't sue me. I live in Thailand. Nobody cares. I got nothing. My first wife has everything, so. Yeah. I mean, I think the reasoning yeah. is that. I got, I got this time. <laughs> so I, I have a net worth of zero. So um, I don't live in that, that world. The reasoning is that if the person's feeling pain, then they're going to be bracing and resisting you, and you're kind of fighting each other. Is, is their thinking no, about it? No. Okay. Yeah. Let, me just, let me just shoot right down for you. Okay. I do lots of painful stuff to people lots of the time. People can tolerate pain. What they can't tolerate, or what's difficult for them is, is the fear that you might way override what I'm able to tolerate. Mm -hmm. It's more of a trust issue. Mm -hmm. It's pain, but it's, it's trust as much as it, is, as it is pain. And I'm gonna show you how it's tolerable. So let me just end that whole topic, because what I, what I have seen is um, people are coming up with all these rules, and, and uh, I will say one more comment. That Baral has now shifted to this peripheral nerve, uh, vascular manipulation, this manipulation, and he was never that way 20 years ago but that generates 10 or 12 seminars instead of three. So there are people, I think it's a financial thing, and I think somewhere there's a legal thing for those kind of rules. Because we do stuff that hurts people all the time in medicine. Um, look at John, patient hit John in the head after he did something that hurt him. He's got a, <laughs> a band-aid on his head. This time patients decided to fight back, right? So um, you have to practice with some degree of safety, and the degree of safety I'm just going to bust on you because I know you, John. You have to have some degree of safety, and safety is you. You and your communication with the patient. I don't always psychically read that I'm going to cross over and I hit something that's painful. Sometimes I do, but it's more of a rare thing. I can feel their whole body tighten up. But you have to give these massive rules if you're talking to 100 people and you don't know what people are going to do. People are going to do all kinds of crazy things. So um, let me just get back to the technique. And um, Are you doing this for cirrhosis of the liver? I want to address that issue a second time. If the level, you know, I don't know if this is, uh, Paul, you, you, you tell me this, you know, is it, are you supposed to diagnose those conditions? Cirrhosis of the liver, are you supposed to, is that, are you supposed to diagnose that in acupuncture? No. Okay, Sorry. then you're off the hook. That's it, you're off the hook. First of all, I'm going to tell you, I do it to cirrhosis of the liver. There's lots of people that have it. We're a society that drinks, okay? And Canada is a society that never stops drinking. Finland never stops drinking. So I'm doing it to lots of people where their liver is a bit enlarged. Whether it's actually fatty or not, I'm not sending them for a test. I, I'm treating people that are stage four cancer. Hey, here's a news flash. Stage four cancer. Where do you think this ends up anyway? Okay, you should not treat them? Okay, they're, they're all, they already have the, the bad diagnosis. So I'm doing it. I'm telling you to practice safely within the level of your life through. When it makes you feel weird, get help. But as far as local things, you can decide to do this for a shoulder problem, mid-back, and low back. More specifically, I'm going to do colon for low back, um, but upper back and shoulder, this is certainly applicable. Um, I'm going to start more or less around right mid-clavicular line as a starting point. And I'm going to start a couple centimeters below, about two or three fingers below. I'm going to start two or three fingers below for a magical reason, because I'm going to go so far deep and I'm going to suck all the skin in I don't want to push on their ribs, and then I'm going to lift up. When I lift up, keep in mind that I'm lifting everything that's attached to it. So people might tell me they feel pulling down here, pulling up there. I don't know what they're going to feel. The liver is being held up by what? There's a thin band of tissue, the uh, coronary ligament, and it just ends in two triangles. So um, we were taught that lifting, lifting this, you're going to feel the resistance as you drop it from those triangles of fascia. But it should lift fairly easily, and it should release fairly easily. 
if you feel resist from something attaching below or it hangs up from something attaching above, if you do that two, three times, that's enough to change that feeling. I'm less specific about it, not because I'm less smart. I understand the anatomy. I understand it very well. But you don't know exactly what's changing in there. I just know that it should move and it's held in place. It's held in place because if it was able to flop around, what would the problem be? What would the problem be? Not related. I'm not just talking about the If I do this technique and there is gold stones, is it possible to dislodge any of these stones? Sure. So it's contraindicated? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you're worried about it, if they have gold stones, I'm doing it. Gallstones might move from them doing jumping jacks, let alone you doing this. If you're worried that that's going to happen, my answer is going to be for you, don't do it. I am doing it to people. If that stone moves, it's going to move anyway. And they don't have one. They've got a bag of stones. When we've done what surgery I did do, when we did cholecystectomy, didn't have one stone. A bag of stones. So it may move something out. Don't talk about gallbladder when you're doing it. Another question. Is there another question? Okay. You you posed the question actually. What was the question? You posed the if question. It's too free. If it's too free, what's yeah. the what's the problem? Oh, it to, if it moves up and down. Right. 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 Well, you're not going to do something to cement it. It should move down, up and down easily from your action, but it won't be easy because it weighs a few kilograms. How will you know normal from abnormal after you've done it to a bunch of people? Um, this is just showing the uh, spear mesenteric vessels. So you're, you're lifting a lot of things, not just liver things. Uh, a note about depth. Depth is preferable as long as it is tolerable to the patient. Um, patients object most to the speed of the technique as opposed to the actual depth. It's going to be the problem most you're going to have with each other. You're going to grab. You're going to grip. I'm going to do it actually faster overall, but you're going to have points where you're jerky. That's the point where they start to defend. Um, you'll get a greater depth if you tell a patient what they're going to experience. Okay, so you tell them that it might be uncomfortable. Um, you get your depth slowly. When I say slowly, it's taking me a few seconds. It does not take me 10 seconds to get my depth. I don't like keeping people, it's like being a dentist and being in their mouth. I want to get it done pretty quickly. So when I say slowly, I mean methodically. Um, tell the patient that they have the ability to stop you. Don't override their ability to, to tolerate discomfort. This is real important. Um, and it's really important because a lot of patients will tell you, I've heard this numerous times, you know what doctors do what you gotta do. First of all, you don't really mean that for me. Okay. Do what you gotta do. You don't actually mean that. I can, I can impose a lot of pain on you. And it's not necessarily gonna be more beneficial for you. So when you're feeling those signals, their whole body's starting to tense up and you feel that, I don't take it any further. What I do is I, I'll stop and I'll say, are you okay? If they say yes, I might decide to go. If they go no, I definitely stop. But when I read those signals that something else is tightening up from them, I, I obey that. Because later on I'm gonna do more subtle things and I don't want them, I, not their conscious part, not this part of their brain. I don't want their deeper parts of themselves to think that I don't respect what they can tolerate and what they can't. Sometimes you get somebody who's a big, strong guy and you just assume you can do all these things to them and you can't. And they feel kind of embarrassed. They should let you beat them up then. Don't do it. Because it doesn't lead to a good place for them. Okay, so. All right, so. Let's look at. Uh, so let me uh, come down right here on the table. Again. Yeah.